So I want to start off this video with a very simple example here. What I'm going to show you is an LM model that I built, as we can see here, September 19th, 2023. So I have built my own LM model um, and uh, I've released it. Um, people have used it. <laughs> and uh, as far as I know, no one has actually fully trained this model. But this model from September 2023 incorporates like 90% plus of what people are falling themselves over with uh, DeepSeek in 2023. I have chain of thought reasoning here. I've got a gated fusion mechanism. I've got a recurrent attention layer. I've got, I add dropout uh, to the output layer. So like I already knew that up front in 2023. Um, then it's just initializing the weights, uh, very straightforward. Uh, so it's the, gated fusion mechanism, the mixture of experts, very straightforward, right? So here's the whole model right here. Uh, and then you would just train the model. Um, it's got 24 attention heads. This is a small model, um, 24 attention heads, a hidden layer size of 448 parameters uh, times the um, number of, uh, uh, times the, um, as <laughs> the total size itself, uh, the number the number of layers, uh, 10, uh, gives you the full output and, and uh, size of the model. So this model is very small. It's a 1 billion parameter model overall uh, is what it ends up adding up to. But showcasing this for you, right? Like uh, people, they think of these things as uh, like brand new innovations, uh, like all of the time, right? Kind of what I've learned from the top, from my experience, from corporate America, from anything where I've excelled at uh, and become like um, the top echelon in which I have been fortunate in a few different areas where I've experienced this type of thing throughout my life. And within that, once you hit that echelon tier uh, and you actually examine it, you realize most people at the top don't know much more than you do. Like, I mean, they definitely know more than you do about these things uh, or else um, they wouldn't have any understanding right? but uh, there's like it's generally speaking the the level of uh, knowledge like expert knowledge in an area is not very different than the general knowledge like it's not significantly higher people put a extreme value on this on everything um in ai and everything in general right and then so um, i i've known this for years and i operate under this assumptions that this is just how life works right um and so i just go about my uh daily routine uh and do these things but and then when things like this happen then i get to make videos like this and then so Let's talk about uh, very specifically what exactly uh, a neural network is like a um, like. Uh, so what I have here is a tensor, right? Uh, and then uh, like a, your typical neural network is made up of multiple tensors. Um, and then there's different innovations and different uh, mathematical concepts that you can add on to this. And that's kind of like where we're at with iterating the, like on top of this, right? But this foundation and, and this function, if you understand this, you understand how to build neural networks overall, which is really just matrix multiplication. It's just tensors and matrix multiplications, right? So a three by three tensor as I have here, which is what we're looking at here, which is just an array of, of values, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, um, arranged in that table, right? And then uh, I can do matrix multiplication to this table. So I, I can essentially like multiply tables times tables. <laughs> and then by doing that, I can get different calculations when I do when I multiply or add or do math to different tables, right? Different tables create the different values. They don't just create two different tables, they update the values within the tables. That's kind of the idea behind matrix multiplication overall. Uh, and then so when you're dealing with neural networks and like uh, like LLM models overall, that's essentially all that they're doing, right? So then you blow that up to a larger concept. Uh, and then you have this, you have a layer, input layers, a hidden layer and an output layer. Within each one of these individual input layers, you have matrix multiplication going on. So in X1 here, you've got these tables that are doing math inside of X1. <laughs> same thing for X2, same thing for EF y1 is the output of these tables right and then it's just literally all that's going on here is just matrix multiplication 
on these tensors. And then uh, uh, if, like, if you are uh, know anything about coding within this, like TensorFlow, all of that, it uh, literally all it's doing is just doing all of this math for you. Right? The reason why I can, I can code uh, and make a model like this is because it's just all of this, like this is just all math, right? And it's just all being simplified uh, by math because of Torch, uh, TensorFlow, whatever library that I'm utilizing, that library is, is doing a bunch of math behind the scenes. And then, so this is all just crunching math. And then, so in order to train a model, it's very simplistic, right? I take this, I take, take, take my code here. And so this model, this is a, a full 1 billion parameter model ready to go. This model in and of itself and this code in and of itself is absolutely useless. The code when it comes to an, like an LLM model doesn't mean anything. Here's the code for a 1 billion parameter model. The code is worthless. What, what matters is the weights of this model, but I need to train the weights of the model. <clears throat> if I just initialize the weights of the model, it's going to have random weights, right? Um, and then so what, how and, and what is training on a model? And that's where all of this comes down to. And then again, this is going to be um, a lot more simplistic than you think overall, right? Like, so uh, where do I get my data to train my model? Where I go here to Hugging Face and then I go to data sets. And then um, what type of data do I need? I don't know. I'm, I'm not a doctor, right? Uh, uh, Wikipedia looks good. It's got 61 million rows. Here's Wikipedia. And then uh, here it is. And then so here's the data that I'm going to train this model on. <laughs> and, and then like, I mean, here it is. And then so uh, as you can see here, it looks to me like a bunch of Russian. And then I'm just going to feed the model this. I don't know what it is, but it says it's Wikipedia and it's got um, 6 million rows and it's 71 gigs of data. So that's uh, 61 million rows. So that's pretty good. So then I would just give the model this, right? Um, and then, I mean, flat out here, like that's literally what you're doing. And, and uh, you might be thinking like, wow, like this is uh, very kind of like preschooler <laughs> as to uh, what this looks like. You would be 100% correct in that. Um, here's one, right? Like, so this one is like, uh, I can tell by doing this, this is like, uh, probably like this is very specifically meant to uh, replicate DeepSeek with regards towards the training set. It's got 5 million rows, very specifically with math, and then a bunch of people are liking it, right? So here we go. Uh, and then exactly, I can, yeah, here's, so how, how would I train a DeepSeek model? Like this. So I give it a problem ID, a prompt. So given uh, this mathematical function, I want it to be this response. Uh, and then it's just the, the response. And then I have a ground truth column and then a, a, like a correct column. <laughs> and then, uh, so I'm essentially just giving the model. Uh, oh, so interesting. So I give it the uh, false answers as well. But so you can see all of it here comes down to the data set. <laughs> and then that's all it is, right? It's And then so, on top of this, the other element that's missing is uh, GPUs, and then so the compute, and then that's the only thing that like really comes down to like uh, cost in, in this instance. So that four million dollars for DeepSeek, that's where the four million dollars comes, right? Like I see a lot of people that don't know about these things are trying to justify like, well, this four million dollars isn't maybe including slave labor, maybe isn't including et cetera, or isn't including et cetera. There is no more et cetera to this. There is no slave labor required for this. Uh, the reason why a schmuck like me can go through and make advancements in these things and in these areas is because this is exactly how it is, right? It's all mathematics and it's all based off of mathematics. And where we are at with mathematics within this and, and how we got here was purely accidental. <laughs> we were making small models like Kotkog, but even smaller. Uh, and then we like Kotkog would have been a giant model five years ago. Yeah. It were the models that we were playing around with. And then all of a sudden someone just decided, hey, let's make it bigger. And when we made it bigger, oh, that did things. And then we experimented. And then for a long time, we had knowledge gaps. Like, what? Like, well, it's doing weird things. What is it doing? We don't know. And then we still don't know some of the things that it's doing and some of the, the whys it's doing because it all comes down to physics, right? So what we're 
Um, advancing at this point and going through at this point is physics breakthroughs. The reason why I bring up physics so much on my channel and talk about physics so much is because physics is the only way that we push this forward. Right? Like uh, That's where we're at within this. If you are expecting advancements in AI from where we're at, you're expecting significant advancements in physics. You're expecting us to solve quantum mechanics. If you think that we are going to solve AI tomorrow, you think we're solving quantum mechanics tomorrow. That's the bottom line. Uh, are we going to? I don't know. Like, there's an 80% chance that we can. We're making significant gains uh, on that road. I think how I lay this out very simplistically to people, I think that there's an 80% chance that uh, life as you know it is going to change within the next five years. <laughs> we will uh, solve quantum mechanics. We will unify quantum mechanics with relativity. Uh, it will all be glorious. We'll figure out how things work. Um, and then uh, we'll make a bunch of cool stuff that no one, like Rick and Morty, will be coming to life. Uh, there's a 20% chance that like that's just full of garbage and that never happens. And then all of this evaporates if that 20% is true. Would I bet my money on it? No. <laughs> uh, that's why I haven't. I, I have zero dollars invested directly in AI. I don't produce models. Uh, there's very specific reasons why I stay on the ancillary outskirts of it, and I have for two years. So I can have this voice, so I can say these things, right? I don't want to be financially invested in this pit that I know is a money pit. Uh, and then so that's kind of where I approach and how I've been talking and looking at these things for two years overall. I try to keep my voice uh, independent. And these are just my pure thoughts overall, unbiased by uh, and unfiltered from any company, any sort of financial interest, etc. If you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.